Hi, this is Prashanda Thornton from the Dietitians Against Diets podcast. I'm excited to introduce you to the St. Louis uh, Food Bank. Now, when you think about the St. Louis Food Bank, and I myself have been victim of this as well, I think it is a food bank that where you're just bringing in food, bringing out food, more like a food pantry. But what I found out is that it's way more to it. It's a lot of moving pieces, and they are actually a vast production company that are bringing in not just food, but they're bringing other resources to communities in unique ways. So I'm really excited to let you in on kind of what's going on behind the scenes. And I will tell you, for me, you know, nutrition is one of the big important pieces of everything when it comes to food. And you'll find out how they are also making a point to make sure that the food that is given out is not just the canned goods, it's not just boxed meals, but it's also creating a well-rounded approach to make sure that you're getting healthy, fresh food as well. So I am excited and I can't wait for you to join me inside. You know, when I first walked in here, I didn't recognize how big this facility was. <laughs> so many different um, departments, and I mean, I'm now seeing just the amount of food when it says that you guys serve 43,000 people with, on a weekly basis. Now I clearly understand why. <laughs> so as the CEO and president coordinating all of these things, you guys have multiple services that you guys provide that some people probably don't even know about. What are some of those unique services that outside of just bringing in food and bringing out food that uh, the food bank provides? Sure, so aside from the basic in and out that you mentioned, you know, we're bringing in food donations from all across the bi-state region. So all of that food comes into this warehouse that you see. It goes to our volunteer center where our volunteers are inspecting that food, making sure that it's still safe, that nothing has been compromised, and they're repackaging it for us to either distribute to our network of agencies, which is over 600 strong now across wow. our 26 counties, or the agencies actually come to our back docks and pick it up. So whatever's most convenient for them. Sure, so with the COVID becoming a part of this, like how have you guys had to adjust to suffice those needs? Yeah, so unfortunately, none of us plan for COVID. Uh, so normally when you wanna grow, you have that planning and preparing and then you grow and then you can sustain it. This just yeah. happened, right? Uh, so we've seen about a 40% increase wow. in terms of the families, men and women across the bi-state that we're serving here at the St. Louis Area Food Bank. And a lot of these families are coming to see us for the first time. Uh, so these people like you and I that had a job on Friday when they went home for work and then Monday got laid off or got furloughed. So My. we're seeing a lot of first time people. Um, so they're spending a lot of time with us trying to understand and navigate the system. So we're spending a lot of time educating people okay. on what a food pantry is, on who qualifies, which is everybody. There's no paperwork, there's nothing, you just show up. But considering what's happening and that you guys have so many partners, you're able to create placement for people to, first of all, educate them and let them know that everyone has accessibility, yes. but also let them know that this is just healthy, this is food for everyone. Yes. And that's the purpose of the food bank. Yeah, and, and that's what we do. We're here to build stronger communities, and we want to do that by empowering people with the food it. and giving them that hope. And that has been truly, truly transformational, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, the vast majority of the, the food that we distribute is going to be donated. And so, you know, whether it's working through partners like a Midwest Dairy, working with farmers across the country, you know, I think a lot of people, when you say St. Louis Area Food Bank, you think about, you know, the shelf stable items, the canned goods, uh, you know, the, the boxes of macaroni and cheese and cereal. But really, one of the things that we want to do is whenever possible, we want to try to provide the most nutritious food possible. Um, and so that's that's working with different partners across, you know, across the country and locally. Um, you know, we pick up from retail stores here in town. We have well over 200 retail partners throughout our 26 county service territory that we pick up from. Um, we also have, you know, community partners, manufacturers, um, and again, farmers. You know, it's it's the perishable They're stuff. They're vital. It you is. Even think about it, you know, how much of a need, because that's, that's the first place that you're going to get anything from. It is. And when, when you're talking about our community partners, if they're doing food drives on their own, they're not going to be collecting fresh produce and dairy and meats and proteins. And that's where the food bank really steps up to help try to create complete meals for individuals. And, and really, not just, you know, hand them food, but also educate them. Um, and, and, you know, and we know that we can't, you know, we can't do this on our own. And so it, it really is leaning on our community partners um, to help bring in the food um, and then get it out into the community. You know, we moved into this facility 2006, 2007, um, and one of the main reasons that we wanted, there was a couple things. 
One, we wanted a safe space for our volunteers, um, you know, kind of away from the forklifts and, and all the machinery. Two is that we wanted the racking so that we could go higher. Um, at our previous facility, we didn't have it, so now a lot of, when you come out here, it looks a lot like Costco or Sam's. That's what I was uh, saying, yeah. <laughs> but um, it allowed us to go higher. Um, and then the cooler and freezer space. Um, the cooler space for all this refrigerated, all the perishable stuff that we're coming, that's coming in. And then the freezer space has really been a game changer too because now we're able to go to retail stores, we're able to get meat that's at the sell-by date, um, freeze it immediately um, so it doesn't go bad and then get it out um, to our partner agencies. And, and so, I mean, when you come out here, I mean, there's probably three, three and a half million pounds of food on the floor. And if we didn't get anything else in, Everything that you see here today and everything that you'll see as we walk through here would be gone in three weeks to a month. And that's how quickly it's going in and it's going out. Um, and, but you can do something, you can help somebody else. And we're here to help. We have two main distribution programs, which are mobile markets and food fairs. Okay. So our mobile markets serve about 70 to 120 families in one distribution. Um, they come as either a half mobile market or a full. Okay. So it's either going to be four to six pallets or eight to ten pallets. And these are meant to kind of be access points in different areas throughout our service territory where people might not have a food pantry or a grocery store or okay. something that's easily accessible. Before I started working at the food bank, I would always think of a food bank as canned goods and dry goods and everything. And it's been an amazing revelation to see what we can do with fresh and healthy foods. Um, produce, I would say, is like makes up the majority of our product as far as what we send out on a daily basis. Okay. People, wow. agencies are actually having to ask for canned goods and dry goods because, well, we have them available. We get those mostly through our food drives, um, you know, those types of individual donations like that. Mm -hmm. um, produce, we have bulk. We are always sending out produce. We're doing so many, especially with the growth of the mobile markets and food fairs, oh. that's just going out all the time. The dairy, people are wanting those healthier items. And so it's been a really great kind of shift, I think, in food banks nationwide. Yeah, so, so it sounds like to me, the fruits and vegetables. Yes, of course. <laughs> your proteins and your dairy, dairy. goods. And yep. we know dairy is a combination of protein and other right, nutrients. Absolutely. So it's kind of like, yep. you hit across all, hit all the boxes Definitely. when it comes to make sure we get nutrients. So, but that's great, because I know now, you know, especially being an outsider, like, the other thing that you guys are providing, you're making sure that people are, are incorporating not just food, but healthy food. And that's so important, especially right now with the COVID, you wanna make sure people are as healthy as they can be. So kudos to you for use, utilizing your profession as a dietitian, make sure that they're also educated, they know what to do with the yeah. food, and you're also coordinating with like the government to make sure that you're giving them the proper information so they know what to do so the food doesn't go to waste. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> What are some ways that people can really be um, impactful and help you guys? Sure. Well, first of all, I want to thank the volunteers because without them, we can't do what we do. We have over 22,000 volunteers a year that wow. just come to our facility. So just to make sure we, we shout out and tell them thank you. But there are lots of other ways. Uh, we have people that will do food drives for us in their community or with their churches or schools or sports groups. Uh, we have people who will do virtual food drives, especially now with COVID. I like You can that. go online and do your shopping that way from the comfort oh of your own home. It's tons of fun. We also have people to help us with just advocacy, outreach, and getting the word out. Um, so this can be anything about sharing information about the food bank and our services and support. It can be referring people who might need more than just some emergency food assistance. They might want to apply for SNAP, uh, which is you know the food stamp program. So there's ways that they can get them to our team to get them taken care of. There's also things they can do from an advocacy in terms of talking to their local representatives, state representatives, or even national if they really feel and excited. And that's something I don't think people, that's not even on their radar. I know, and, and it should that, be. Kind of, that so makes powerful. a large impact, not on more of a macro level, you know, versus yes. the micro level. Yes, and, and I know that a lot of times our legislators and senators, they always hear about the complaints. Um, so getting calls from people asking them to support something for a really robust reason is powerful. They want to hear those voices. They want to hear the differences that the programs and the things that we're focusing in on that are going to put more food on the tables of our families here in the Bi-State region are heard. So there's lots of ways that people can get involved. And again, you can make a phone call from home, you can send a letter, you can send an email, 
You can tweet about it. I mean, there's lots of simple get ways. Out. Get the word right, out. Just get the word life. out. Let people know that this is a priority for you. And it's amazing because if one of my friends finds something that's important to them, an issue, I'm going to jump on board, right? Whether it's someone like, I don't really know who you are yet. But if it's someone that you know, those relationships are powerful. Hello, this is Rishonda Thornton, the Dietitian Against Diets. Thank you guys for taking a look at that video. Thanks to Midwest Dairy for making it possible. I was really um, thrown, away, thrown away at the, what I've seen, all the inner workings of the food bank. I have Ryan um, Farmer here with me. He's the marketing director, and he actually is a, was a big part of the, of the video and the tour. So, uh, Ryan, I want to introduce you today. I want to thank you for taking the time to show, show us what it looks like back there. I'm actually curious because... Is this what is that what it looks like every day at the food bank? Yeah, certainly. I think, you know, there's so many people that are just like you that have, you know, can't even, you know, don't even have a concept of just how big the issue of hunger is in our community. And so when you see millions of pounds of food, um, it really kind of helps put it in perspective and, and really kind of speaks to the need in this community and knowing that, you know, it's just turning over so quickly and then, you know, if nothing was coming in, if nothing else came in, all of that food that you saw would be gone in three weeks to a month. It's it's just crazy to think about. Yes, it's amazing. You know, <clears throat> knowing and knowing the food bank, you hear about the food bank all the time until you see not just see the facility, but when you go into the facility. I mean, you guys have square so much square footage and so much height. And also not only that, you have a storage compartment, but you are very intentional how you organize it, you know. And when I look, when I think about now, when I think about the food bank, I think you guys are kind of like a conduit. You know, you, you're you right there, the gap between the people that are looking to find ways to help. And you, also, and you bring those resources to the people that needs help. And that's one thing to me that stands out about the food bank that um, people may not really get that part of it. Yeah, and I think, you know, it, it really is a network. It's it's over 500 agencies, you know, throughout the, the bi-state region. So both Missouri and Illinois, and it's it's these communities and it's just people stepping up because they want to do something to help their neighbors in need. And so, you know, that's what the food bank really is. We are kind of like a hub uh, for a lot of these organizations that, you know, we're never the only source of food for these organizations, but um, a lot of times we are the primary source. And we're able, uh, through our relationships within the food industry, to bring in uh, fresh produce and dairy and meats and proteins and those types of items that maybe wouldn't be collected through a normal food drive. And I'm glad you brought that up because that was one thing that I did not expect. Um, when I think of um, food banks, I think of food pantries. I think of uh, smaller just facilities where they're just um, dry goods and non-perishables. However, even though that is a big percentage of what you guys store, there is a section that's dedicated to the fresh fruits vegetables, produce, um, dairy, um, meats. And that's, to me, something that I don't even think that uh, people are even aware of, that you guys are carrying those type of uh, commodities. Exactly. And those are the kind of things that we want to bring in, because ultimately, as, as an organization, we want to be providing complete meals whenever possible. So it's not just the canned goods or, you know, the macaroni and cheese, but it's also the produce. It's also the dairy. It's also, you know, meat. Um, that's one of the reasons that we, when we were looking for a new facility back in, in 2006, um, this one really stood out because it gave us the opportunity to bring in not only more non-perishable and the shelf stable products, but also, you know, about 25,000 square feet of cooler and uh, freezer space that, you know, really was a game changer for the way that, that we operate as an organization. And so uh, to be able to have that, that space, you know, it's, it's, it's really almost a necessity um, to keep up, you know, with, with all these different partners throughout the bi-state region. And it says a lot. It says a lot that you guys are very thoughtful in your thought process because you're not only in, I definitely, this is one of my favorite parts of it is that you're not only just providing food, but you're providing healthy food. And you even have standards of which you set to where 70% of the food has to be nutritious. And to me, like that is, you know, I know people are in need of, and sometimes we give, sometimes people that are in need don't really get the best of the, the choices, but you guys are ensuring, like you said, they get the whole meal, not just getting a couple of uh, 
um, foods, foods or sides here and there, they're grabbing, everybody have a balanced meal, a balanced plate. And I think that's so important and so great. Yeah, when I, yeah whenever possible, that's what we're aiming for is because, you know, we know um, a lot of times if you're new to food assistance, you may have other, you know, underlying health conditions um, and we don't want to contribute to worsening that. And, and maybe you don't have health insurance, maybe, you know, we don't want to exacerbate the problem by, you know, handing out food. And that's one of the things that we talk about when we do community food drives is think about the food that you would want to feed yourself, feed your family, um, you know, and just be, be mindful of that. Um, these are individuals that, you know, again, I think we talked about it when you were out here, you know, you just never know what may lead someone to being in need of food assistance and whenever possible, we just want to make sure that we're, um, you know, being good stewards of, you know, the donations, whether that's mm -hmm. donations of time or money, or food, uh, we want to get it to people in the way it was intended, and whenever possible, we want it to be, you know, high quality, nutritious food. So, so. it seems as if you guys, in order to make that happen, you really kind of have to vet who you uh, partner with, who you have um, that are providing some of these foods. So, you guys have like a standard or system in which you have certain um, agencies that you know are going to bring in those types of foods that you know is going to be good for your community, or like how does it work? I'm sure so many different. You have to say no sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really for us, it's about, um, you know, forming relationships and, you know, we have uh, staff members that are working with retail partners. So that could be grocery stores, could be convenience stores. You know, we work uh, with Quick Trips, for example, to pick up, you know, salads and, and sandwiches and things like that. Um, but then you also have partners, uh, you know, uh, farmers, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, Keller Farms over in Illinois or Midwest Dairy or in some of the dairy producers we have here in town. Um, there's not a ton of manufacturing plants around here. Um, there's a Kraft Heinz plant over in Illinois. And, okay. uh, but we certainly are always working uh, to see what's available to the network um, and, and work to, you know, just continually be looking for new sources of food because we know that the problem, you know, you know there's always going to be hungry people and we're continually looking for what's available to us. And so as a member of Feeding America, which is the nationwide network of food banks, um, it's really opened up a lot of doors for us as an organization um, so that we're not just limited to Missouri and Illinois. Uh, we can look across the country. Um, you know, it's... Right. Here in this area, our growing season is so short. It's about three to four months out of the year, um, primarily. And so, you know, to be able to look to the coast, to look down south, you know, to these warmer climates and be able to bring in, you know, 40,000 pounds of apples from Washington State or sweet potatoes from Mississippi or, you know, just just constantly looking. And that's, that's really what we're looking for is, um, you know, I think we talked about it when you were out here is that, you know, in America, there's not a shortage of food. It's just trying to find how can we get the food into this area and then get it out and get it into the hands of people that need it. So, you know, that's that's what's our number one priority. Yeah. Well, um, I'm, my next question is because as you're saying, and I'm hearing all the ways you guys are finding those resources, because again, it's not a shortage of, of food. And that's the unfortunate part because the, 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 the hunger, the, the amount of people that are needing food, you know, is it's not comparable to the food that's available. And, you know, mm -hmm. and that's, that's a big problem. So even considering right now, you know, going through the COVID, I mean, we've been in this for half a year already. You know, yep. families are losing jobs, children not being able to go to school. Summertime is always a big, a big problem when it comes to children, especially. And so when, with, the, with the surge of the COVID, like how have you guys been impacted by it? And what have you guys been able to do to uh, still be able to provide those foods and resources for those people in need? Yeah, I mean, it's been really dramatic. Um, just to give some perspective, we've seen about a 43% increase in the amount of food that we're distributing since the middle of March. And so um, to put that in perspective, because you're like, well, what's 43%? You know, what's that increase look like? Um, you know, we've already distributed since the middle of March over 26 million meals, you know, throughout the bi-state region. And so it's, it's really dramatic and it's caused us to shift um, a number of things. Internally, we're looking at, you know, limiting the number of people in the building, cutting back the number of people, you know, during our volunteer shifts, but increasing the number of shifts um, to try to keep up with the influx. Um, one thing that we're so grateful for is that, you know, in the early days of the pandemic, we were seeing some supply shortages. Uh, a lot of it was on actually on the shelf stable side of things. Um, but, you know, we've continued to work around that. And, and one of the ways that we've been able to do that is we have such a giving community. Uh, you know, I think, you know, just from living here, being a part of it, you know, immersing yourself uh, in this area. Um, it's a it's a 
by and large, a very giving community and people take care of their neighbors, they take care of their friends. And so, you know, we really see it across the board, you know, in urban areas and rural areas, it's people stepping up time and time again. And it's not just individuals, but it's businesses, companies, manufacturers, you know, just everybody working together because we as the St. Louis Area Food Bank can't do this alone. It takes, you know, it takes those partners, it takes our, you know, community partner agencies like the food pantries and some of these distribution sites um, that are giving of themselves, giving of their time um, and really organizing to help feed people. You know, there's a desire to want to help, but maybe they don't always have the access to the resources. And that's where the food bank can step up Mm -hmm. and help out. Um, But um, yeah, and it's, it's completely shifted too, just with the way that we get the food out into the community. Um, you know, typically our model has been, you know, get the food in, you know, we, we store it in the warehouse and then get it out, uh, to our, our partners. And a lot of times, um, what that looked like was going to your food pantry and your community, uh, wherever you live. Uh, and, and sometimes it's set up like a grocery store sometimes, you know, but based on the number of people that live in your, you know, in your home, um, you know, you're going to be given some food to then take back to your, to your residence. Um, but it, with COVID, it's really shifted the way that we operate things. We've been doing drive-through distributions since about 2008, but typically it was, you know, two, four, you know, a few, a few each month. Now we've really gone to uh, with trying to limit contact and and making it um, as easy as possible for people that need assistance. Um, we're doing almost everything drive-through. Um, you know, some of our distributions do have walk-up um, mm-hmm. if you don't have access to a vehicle. Um, but certainly we just want people to know that there are resources out there. Uh, when you go to these distributions, you're not going to be asked for ID. You're not going to be, you know, um, you have to go through a bunch of questions. We just want to get food to the people that need it. And so that's the one thing that, you know, that's one of the messages that we want to get out there is that if you need food assistance, please reach out, whether that's, you know, if you have access to the internet, you can go to our website, which is stlfoodbank.org. Uh, you can always call our front desk at 314-292-6262. Um, just let us know your zip code. You don't have to give us a bunch of personal information. Just let us know where you live and we'll be happy to try to direct you to a place where you can go to get food um, in your community. And you, and you and you know what? I'm glad you, you you know put out the information because there is a stigma when it comes to getting food from the to, from the food bank. And that was that's something mm-hmm. that you talked to me about how you guys are very careful to, to, to keep the dignity of the people that are in these situations and, you know, helping them to understand that just because you're getting food from the food bank doesn't mean that it's, some, it's not something that you should be ashamed of. And, you know, you're getting high quality foods. And you actually had a couple of stories in me about some of the instances that you've seen, especially during the COVID and how you've seen, you know, people, you know, how you're interacting with people to let them know that, hey, we're here for you. You know, don't feel bad about this. We, we're all one paycheck away from being in this situation. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just, you know, when you talk to some of the individuals, um, you know, one thing that I think really resonates with me is just uh, the gratitude, you know, um, and and just the appreciation, um, because there are so many people that are are facing this with with COVID. There's a lot of people that are coming through, you know, these distributions that have never needed food assistance before in their lives. And, you know, we were just at one uh, recently over in Harden, Illinois, and a a woman came through earlier uh, and picked up food. And then, um, you know, she, she went through the line, she got her food and she left. Um, and then as we were kind of like packing things up at the end of the distribution, she came back um, and she had tears in her eyes. Um, and, and we started talking to her and, and um, she's like, I just want to tell you, like, thank you. Like my, my parents can't get out of their house. Um, you know, they're homebound, they're elderly. Um, and, and having this distribution allowed me to, to get some food to them um, that they needed, but she also needed help herself. And so, you know, we were able to, uh, we, you know, we still had food there and, and we were able to load up her car as well. And just, you know, the tears um, that, I don't know, I, I'm such a sensitive person anyway, so it's, <laughs> it's hard for me to even like just talk about it, but it's, um, it's really powerful when you hear some of these stories. Um, you know, I can think back to one of my, you know, most powerful memories uh, of my time here at the food bank. You know, I've been here almost 11 years. And Mm -hmm. and one of the things that resonated with me was another one of these distributions that we were doing. Um, 
and a little girl came through with a with a red wagon and her parents were with her um, and we just happened to have some some bakery goods uh, we had some cupcakes and cakes and and uh-huh. I'm, I know I'm talking to you so I'm, I'm gonna be good and and recognize that you know cakes and cupcakes are not <laughs> all the time food you're you're you're, wa- um, you're walking on thin ice now <laughs> I know but see but that's just one of joking. the things we talk about too we talk about you know everybody deserves a treat um, and this yeah. little girl it was her birthday the week before and so we allowed her uh, you know we said you know anything in in here in this bin you just you find the cake that that speaks to you. What what looks best to you? And it had been her birthday the week before, and her parents wow. came up afterwards and said, you know, you don't know how much this means because we weren't able to get her a cake last week for her birthday, um, and she was so excited when she saw that you guys had had cakes um, today. And so, you know, to be able to provide that, um, you know, it's just it's it really touches you because it it helps you better understand and be empathetic and and. Just, you know, I think that that's something that we could all this this world could use a little more empathy and then yes. understanding and and just recognizing, like you said, that we are all one you know paycheck or life event away from needing food assistance. And you just never know what someone may be going through um, and what this might mean for them. You know, being able to provide food might free up some resources mm-hmm. to, you know, uh keep the air conditioning or the heat on or to be able to make the rent this month or to pay for medicine. Um, you know, you just, again, you never know what someone's situation may be. And I think just, you know, going into these, uh, you know, just having empathy and and, and understanding and and have an open mind and and recognize that, you know, to people that say, oh, you're enabling people by, by just giving them food. I say, please like come out to some of these solutions and see people lined up sometimes an hour, two hours before you know, the, before the distribution starts or before, you know, before the pantry opens. Uh-huh. Um, sometimes they have their kids in tow because they can't afford daycare. Um, yes. And I just ask people to think about that. You know, um, if you were to ask them, I bet they would say, I would rather be anywhere else than in this line right now. Um, but if that need is there, we want people to know it's okay to ask for help. You know, yes. it's like, um, the, a quote that really resonated with me was uh, at a distribution earlier this year, um, talking to a, a gentleman named Oscar uh, that was going through the line. And he said, you know, when you go to the doctor, you have to tell them what's wrong so they can help you. If you don't tell them, you know, they can't do anything for you. And so it's the same thing with, with asking for food assistance. If you don't, if you don't tell us that, you know, you're struggling, How you know, we you can't, know? we can't do anything. And so, um, you know, whether it's food or whether it's providing other resources like cleaning supplies or hygiene items, um, you know, we just want people to know that those resources are out there in their community and we want to help. And it, and I just can't help, but I love to hear those stories because that's, you can't make that up. That's real people. I'm sure so many people can connect with that. And again, you never know when you're in that situation to know that you can just walk through your guy through, through the doors or give you guys a phone call and not feel you know, you already feel stressed. You always already feel, you know, things have been taken away from you and to put your hand on ask for help is, is, is hard, you know. But what stands out to me is, is to, the, the fact that there's not a shortage of food. And that's, that to me just makes it more clear on how it's such a need to have organizations such as yourself to be that piece in the middle to, to have that, create that accessibility for these people. And it's, it's just amazing to me that, Food is being wasted. I mean, people are, take it for granted. And you have some people that are not able to have a meal, maybe one meal a day, and it may not even be a healthy meal, you know? Yeah. And I like that you and guys t- have stepped up to the plate. You know, you stepped up to the plate even more so during this these particular times. And it seems like you guys stepped up to the plate, which created opportunity for other people that can help to step up to the plate, whether it's individual people that are coming to volunteer, people that are advocating, large organizations that are providing some sort of pathway or resource that you guys are able to get those those units out there. You guys are able to make purchases for more commodities that are healthy that can get it to those communities. I mean, that says a lot. 
Yeah, I mean, it really is about access. And, and you just think about it, you know, if your closest source of food is 20 to 30 minutes away, maybe you live in a rural community where the closest grocery store may be, you know, a half an hour away and you don't have reliable transportation, how are you going to get that food? You know, it's going to be that food pantry or that, you know, that site in your community um, that's going to help you like step up. You know, if your closest source of food is a convenience store, there's not a lot of access to produce. And so it's, it's really looking at um, you know, the, the community as a whole. So we cover those 26 counties, 14 in Missouri and 12 mm-hmm. in Illinois, and they're all different. You know, they all have different things, you know, going on and you can't, it's not a one size fits, fits all, you know, model. And so it's really leaning in and having those conversations and, and learning more about what's going on in those particular communities and how can the food bank be a resource? Because, you know, again, we know that we can't do that alone. And the only way that we're able to keep up with that increase in demand is, you know, this community stepping up with their time, their money, their voice, uh, their food. And and those are the, the ways that we're able to help so many people. Has there been like, you know, I think about, you know, when people are people are really not sure how to provide um, support, you know, um, has there been some, some unique some unique ways that you've seen people? I know you told me about the family that will come for every day for a couple of weeks, you know, given their time. I know you talk about large organizations that had just helped provide funding for to make to ensure that you guys are getting those resources. What are some unique things you've seen over, over the last couple of months during COVID with some of these other um, supporters or partners? Yeah, we actually just saw, um, we just got the, the totals back. Um, there was a, a girl that was having a birthday party. Um, obviously, birthdays look a little bit different these days. Um, but she's uh, she's done a couple of things for her. She did a, a virtual food drive with her school um, when, when they were out um, earlier this year. And so um, she wasn't able to do a, a actual physical food drive in her school because all the kids had uh, we're not in school. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she organized a virtual food drive with her school and helped raise over $2,000, which was amazing. Um, <laughs> wow. you know, just getting the word out in her community. A child. And then, and then she stepped up again. Uh, and we're, we're talking about a girl that's eight years old, wow. um, you know, that wanted to do something and said, it's, it's not okay for people to be going hungry in this community. And so for her birthday, she said, I don't want your presents. I just want to see people. Um, you know, and, and I want to help others. And so she organized a, a superhero themed birthday party. It was a drive through birthday party. And she told everybody, you know, all her friends and their families to, to bring food for the food bank. Um, and they ended up collecting over 800 pounds of food. Um, you know, and it was so cool. They, you know, she's dressed up with her superhero. She's got a cape on, she's got her, Eight you know, her mask on. Um, and it was just, you can, wow. again, you can just, you can feel the joy and it's, it's so inspiring um, to know that, you know, yeah, hunger can affect anyone, but literally anyone can affect hunger. We can all do something. And so if this eight year old girl can do something and raise, you know, $2,000 and collect 800 pounds of food, um, you know, at, at a time where there are a lot of people struggling and, and, um, it's just, it's so inspiring to, to hear stories like that because mm-hmm. it really does make you realize that, you know, there are so many different ways that you can impact, uh, someone else's life and, and help provide food. And so, you know, again, whether it's volunteering coming out here to, to the food bank, whether it's going out to one of our distributions and helping, you know, hand out the food, um, or yeah. whether it's, you know, collecting money or food or even just writing your legislator and saying, Hey, it's not okay for people to be going hungry. You know, what, what can we do on a, on a larger scale to help make sure that people are fed? Yeah. And I know, and um, that's so interesting to me because I was actually talking to Meredith, the CEO at the food bank. And I talked to her about different ways, partners that just kind of came in and she gave me some unique um, um, ways that some of the companies have found creative ways. Like she said something about spectrum, like they changed their fittings to make more hand sanitizers and they were able to, they were able to get a lot of hand sanitizers with them. She talked about Mm -hmm. several different agencies that just found a unique way to, um, they may not be able to provide the food, but they can provide other avenues in order where there are other things besides food that they can give, or they can provide avenue where you can get more food. And I thought that was great. There are any other organizations that have done some, some things like that? Sure. I mean, uh, you know, another recent example uh, would be Midwest Dairy. You know, Midwest Dairy stepped up. Um, we talked about the amount of like produce and dairy and all this, you know, perishable products coming in. And so, you know, so many of our partner agencies, um, you know, they don't have big budgets. They don't have, you know, access to a lot of resources. 
I mean, we are bringing in more perishable food and, and a lot of them didn't have access to, you know, good refrigeration. Um, and so, you know, uh, you know, someone like Midwest Dairy and some of our other funders have stepped up, you know, with refrigeration units, uh, with freezers um, that, you know, we can take out to our agencies. Uh, we've been able to work with some different uh, manufacturers to get um, to get some of these refrigeration and freezer units into our school markets, uh, mm-hmm. which is another program that we've launched within within the last year or so um, that is providing avenues and again, increasing access. And so it's not just, you know, sending, uh, sending home a backpack full of food. It's yeah, actually, it's you know, more. taking it, taking an empty classroom <laughs> and, and putting, um, you know, almost like a small grocery store in the school. And so when, when parents are coming, uh, to the school to pick up the kids, they can go through and, and pick up items to then take back to their family. And so, yeah. you know, things like that, it's just, again, it's about increasing access. And that's so great. You know, actually, I read on something I heard about. I know, like, the, you guys, you had told me about the uh, the USDA, how they are providing these boxes. And, like, and I read mm-hmm. a little bit more about that. And I found out that, like, they're allowing some, like, I think it was Midwest there. They're allowing them to provide um, resources for you, you know, provide monetary resources, which is typically they don't allow for things like that. So I think, mm-hmm. like, it's so even great that on a larger scale, like the USDA or stepping in, stepping up to the plate and kind of letting these other organizations they know that's legit and that's that's trying to bring nourishment to the community. They're allowing them to um, kind of make moves that they typically wouldn't have been able to do in the past. And I really just like the combination, every layer um, from the top down to the ground, everyone has just been moving forward and finding ways to create opportunities for these people that are in need of that. And I think it's just great. Yeah, and I mean, you, you saw it firsthand. I mean, the boxes that you're referencing um, is a program through the USDA called uh, the Farmers to Families Food Box Program. And so what the USDA is doing is working with some of our local uh, producers like Old Time Produce or Proffer mm-hmm. or some of these different um, you know, farmers. And we're putting together these amazing boxes that's a good mix um, I mean, you know, you saw it. there were there <laughs> Man, grapes, there's, you, you know, zucchini, there's yeah. cauliflower, there's all these different. Uh, um, it was like it's, real fresh fruits and vegetables, a variety, you know, not mm-hmm. just apples and oranges, but we had cauliflower and it had grapes. I mean, I was in heaven, had bell peppers. I mean, you guys <laughs> came with like. Of a, it came with like a garden, you know, and I just thought mm-hmm. that's amazing because you didn't shortchange. You didn't just put the, you know, a bunch of, a couple of bananas, you know, you put like real nutritious in a variety of foods in there. I just thought that was like, that's, that's so thoughtful. That's what I look at it being very thoughtful. Yeah. I mean, and that's just it. it it's, it's, a, it's incumbent on us as an organization to constantly like be working um, and listening and, and learning, you know, how can we adapt? How can we evolve? How can we change the way that we're doing? You know, I mean, when we started in 1975, it was all non-perishables. And now, you know, you're seeing millions of pounds of produce and dairy and, and meats. And, and it's really, we as an organization have evolved. And so, you know, but it's also having those conversations, what's available to us, what, um, you know, how can we get this food in? How can we get it back out? And, and what do we have access to? Um, because, you know, we know that the need is there and, and that farmers to families food box program. I mean, you're talking about Ugh. just since March, I mean, we're talking well over 6 million pounds of, of produce and it's, and like you said, it's all good stuff and it's, you're able to, it's not, it's a good variety of product too, which is great. Yes. It just, this things like this just makes me smile. It makes me happy. It makes me know that there are organizations out there that just cause you don't see it doesn't mean it's not happening, but you guys are busting your butt to, to help others. And I just think that's such, I just think it's such a, a it, this, this needed to be spotlighted, especially during these times, because it's, it just makes you know that, you know, I just feel good about our world and that we are still humans helping humans and we're figuring out a way to, to make it work for all of us to be happy and healthy on this earth. I think, think, think that is just so important. And so as you're talking to me, I'm just smiling. I mean, you probably gonna, you were going to make my day. <laughs> you, made, it, you made my day when we went to that, to when I got that tour. That to me just changed my perspective and I want to do everything I can to support and bring awareness to keep bridging that gap for those in need. So I know I'm happy. And so I've got a question for you personally. Mm-hmm. Like, what, like, how did this, you know, you never know, like, you haven't, you didn't say, oh, when I grew up, I want to be a director of marketing for a nonprofit food bank. Like, <laughs> what was it that just, like, brought you into where you just said, this is what I want to do? Like, what, like, what just locked you in? 
Um, really, it started at, at my previous job. I worked in radio, and um, you know, the St. Louis Area Food Bank was an organization that that we, as a as a radio station, um, supported, um, and really just. Uh, it gave me an opportunity to learn a little bit more about the issue of hunger because I think much like you, I didn't really understand the scope and, and the magnitude of the issue because it is one of those things, if, if you're struggling to feed yourself or feed your family, a lot of times you don't want anyone to know about that. And so, it, you know, and if people aren't talking about it, you know, one, I'm glad that I've brought some joy into your life today. So that makes me happy. <laughs> um, I'm happy that you're happy. Um, but two, I, I can't say it enough. Um, just the opportunity to talk about the issue um, brings me a lot of joy because um, we can't do this alone and it's going to take, you know, communities helping out to make this happen. And so just by lending your voice and, and spotlighting, you know, the work being done in this community so that people do have a better understanding um, that, the, that the issue is much bigger than a lot of people think that it is. It's, it's, it's really um you know, on, on a, on a pretty grand scale, um, you know, a big issue, but, you know, we know that it is something that when we work together, you know, we can, we can accomplish great things and we can have, you know, a huge impact on our community. And it's, it's something like you said, there's not a shortage of food. We just need to find ways to make sure that we're getting the food in and then getting it to people that need it. Because, you know, you know what it feels like when you're hungry that, you know, you talked about the stress earlier and, and it's, it's a heavy time right now for a lot of people, um, and if we can help alleviate some of that stress uh, for individuals, that's something that we want to do. And so, you know, it's it's twofold. One, we want people to know that the resources are out there for them. Mm -hmm. And two, you know, we want people to know that, you know, we still need help. There's still lots, hundreds of thousands of hungry people in this yeah. community. Um, and and we can all do our part. We can all do something. So, you know, one of, we just talk about find something that's meaningful to you. Um, you know, maybe you don't have the financial resources to write a check or go online and make a donation, but you have a few hours of your time and you can go out and, and help box up food or help distribute it. Yeah. Um, maybe you can, you know, send a quick note or an email, you know, to your congressperson and say mm -hmm. like, Hey, this is not okay. Like, let's make sure that we're funding, um, you know, these, these USDA programs, let's make sure that we're funding SNAP properly. You know, SNAP is such a huge safety net for individuals. Yes. Um, and, and as an organization, we want to be more than food. We want to, you know, we want to provide avenues for people uh, to shorten the lines. And, you know, as I said, when you were out here, this is the only place I've ever worked where I hope that I'm out of a job someday and I got to come, <laughs> you know, be your engineer in the studio or something. I don't know. Uh, we'll hold a spot but, for you. <laughs> go back, go back to my radio days. But um, yeah, really just to get back to what you were originally asking, like it's, yeah. for me, it was just the opportunity to learn a little bit more about the organization. And I think that food is such a basic human right. And if I can do anything, um, you know, however small or, or large scale it may be, if I can do something to help uh, alleviate some stress for someone um, and to be able to provide them one of those basic necessities like food, you know, that's yeah. something that, that I want to do. Well, this is, I'm it's glad to hear your, the, your heart behind it because it's not just a job. It's a passion. No. It's a mission. You know, and I and that's gonna that's gonna keep moving this forward. And this is actually um, for those who don't know, this is a National Hunger Awareness Month. So this is a great yeah. opportunity to bring these conversations to the forefront. And now that we bring these conversations to the forefront, how can we now start bringing in our our time, our energy, our ideas, our voices, our monetary? Like, how can we start coming together and really um, helping to solve this epidemic of hunger? Um, so I'm glad that we have these conversations. Um, as we're getting ready to close, um, considering, um, you know, this is not over <laughs> and we don't know how long we're going to be in this um, this unfortunate series of events. So I just don't want to throw it out there. There is there any of any things that are in the in the future that you guys are potentially thinking about i know you guys are constantly finding these all these different services go to their website seriously mm -hmm. and you will see the variety of services that they provide again i mean they make sure they're finding a way to get food to you so it's it makes it easier on the user end that's great um uh, but is there any um other things out there that's coming to, to know to look out for um, or um you know it doesn't take um, you know, it doesn't take a vacation. 
you know, I just think it's important to, to reiterate that, you know, um, we have been blown away and, and so appreciative of all the support that we've received. But, you know, I think when you're talking about recovery uh, from this pandemic, you know, you're not going to measure it um, in months. I think it's it's truly going to be, you know, a years, you know, years that that mm. that this continues. And so, you know, just continuing to find ways we don't have, you know, obviously we're not doing uh really many in-person events um, or anything like that. But um, there's a number of, of different online fundraisers. Um, you know, there's there's different ways that you can get involved. Um, you can go and, and learn about our, our work in advocacy. Um, you can learn about the different, you know, partners that we have in your community and, and maybe maybe ask them, say, hey, you know, what can I do to help um, and find something that's a little bit closer if you can't make it out here to Bridgeton, um, you know, to, to come volunteer out here. Um, you know, or, or just, you know, be like, uh, Caroline, the little girl that organized the, the food drive, you know, with her family, um, and, and organize something like that in your own neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. but the most important thing is just to know that you can, you can have an impact on someone's life. Um, and you know, you never know what someone might be going through and you never know how you could, you know, change, turn someone's life around, you know, for them by being able to provide that basic necessity of, of food. Um, and so again, you know, thank you for the plug and thank you for all the, the mm -hmm. awareness. Um, I just encourage anyone, like you said, go to the website, stlfoodbank.org and, and, and look and find something that's meaningful to you. And what's the number again, just to put it back out there, the telephone sure. number? It's a three one. Oh, for sure. It's three one four two nine two six two six two. That's three one four two nine two six two six two. Or go to the website, stlfoodbank.org. Great. Well, Ryan, I, it's, it's been such a pleasure. I got a chance to see you two times this, this week. <laughs> hey, it's a good um, week. Anytime we can hang out for <laughs> twice in one week, that's a good thing. There you go. There you go. And um, for my, me, for myself, I mean, at some point, I'd love to contribute my, my skill set as far as nutrition, um, bring on other people, bring on other groups and get the, get the word out. So I would definitely be doing my work on my end to bring help to the cause. Um, for those who are out there, you got the website address. Read about them. See what they're really doing. Again, you saw the video. Go back, rewind it, watch it again. It really gives you some insight on, is again what it looks like inside. You know what their partners have been doing. It's a big production going behind the scenes, and it's a needed production because there's a need in our communities that need to be addressed. So again, Ryan, thank you for being a part of this uh, podcast interview. Thank you for being, you know, letting us come inside and peek through the doors. We really appreciate it. Good luck for everything moving forward. I know that um, the mission isn't over and you guys are only going to continue to expand and spread. And um, maybe one day you'll be out of that job and I'll give you a call. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Take care, Ryan. Thank you, guys. Right, you See too. you soon. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that enriching conversation. I learned a lot myself. And when I went there and took a look at what's going on at the food bank, it just helped me to see just how much work that St. Louis is doing for their community. So I hope that you guys find ways to help and um, advocate for them. So as we're getting ready to close, I have one more thing I want to show you uh, in respect to Hunger Action Month. Um, this is a video that features Olympians, NFL, play NFL players, uh, famous chefs, and others that are raising a gallon to milk to show their appreciation for the dairy farmers while supporting the checkoff's goal of getting nutritious dairy to food insecure Americans through Feeding America Partnership. So take a look and enjoy. The dairy community is working hard at getting gallons of milk to the people who need it. But we can always use more help. Why don't you join us?
join in and show your support by raising these gallons with us. Post your own video or photo raising a gallon of milk and use the hashtag UndeniablyDairy to help us make a difference in your community.